Well, God bless you. I'm Bishop Joseph Walker, and you're tuned in to Deeper Dive right here in Nashville, Tennessee at the Mount Zion Church. And I am so excited to have you connected on today. Wherever you're watching this platform, thank you so much for tuning in to this YouTube channel. Deeper Dive is the Mount Zion's version of Bible study where we believe God has called us into deeper levels of studying his word. And I thank you for tuning in. And if it's your first time connecting with us, make sure you let us know. Uh, make sure you comment or just make sure you follow us. Follow our ministry at Mount Zion Nashville. Follow me at Joseph Walker 3. Follow my wife at Dr. Steph Walker on Instagram. We'd love to connect with you. We appreciate the opportunity to pour into your life. Also, uh, we're really excited about all that God continues to do uh, in Mount Zion. We are geeked. We're just a few weeks away from the most awesome Business Connect brunch on the planet. It's happening here in Nashville, Tennessee, January 27th at 10 a.m. at the JW Marriott. And I want to encourage you to come be a part. Come on out. All you got to do is register right here at BCB at 78228. You want to be a part of this. It's going to be a blessing. And I promise you, it will be a game changer for you, your business. If you're a visionary, put yourself in the right rooms. It's something about being in the right rooms, hearing the information that's going to be imparted. Dr. Dale Bronner will be our speaker one of our speakers, but he's our main speaker. And let me tell you, I mean, the Bronner brothers, the Atlanta Hair Show, you know, I mean, they've just, they just changed the game in terms of entrepreneurship and faith and this whole intersection between uh, ministry and the marketplace. He gets it and uh, he's going to bless us in a powerful way. So you don't want to miss that. Get your tickets, y'all. Don't wait till the last minute and be calling me talking about Bishop, can I get a seat? Get it now. So I look forward to you being there. It's going to be a blessing. We are uh, in this wonderful series, Growing Up. And of course, I got some guests with me me today, friends, and and uh, then I guess they're friends, and uh, and I just really, really uh, cannot wait to uh, get into part three of this series today. But before we do that, let's give you an opportunity to sow, to give, and I want you to do that now on the giving platforms at the bottom of the screen. Make sure that you sow now. Uh, thank you so much for being so faithful. We are a ministry of generosity, and we thank you for understanding that and sowing into that, and the blessing of the Lord rest upon those who will do just that. So we thank you so much, and let's pray, Father. Father, thank you for this moment, this time to be able to give and to be able to receive the revelation you're about to give to us today as we grow up in you. We thank you. It's already done in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So my guests are back. And of course, as I shared uh, last week with you who they were, I'm so thankful. And of course, uh, thank you again, uh, Dr. Mortez Burks, for being with us today. A Rihanna, the personality. Thank you so much, Brendan Nicole. And of course, we thank you, uh, Robert Higgins, for being with us today. Now, we're going to talk about one that, uh, you know, it's going to create, I think, some, some, some interesting conversations about our growing up in God. We talked about pursuing God. We talked about knowing God. How about obeying God? Ooh, <laughs> that's always the big one, right? Yeah. That's where the rubber meets the road. And uh, the Bible says in John 14 and verse 1, if you love me, right, if you love me, right, then keep my commandments. This is uh, so important to hear this. Uh, if you love me, keep my commandments, John 4 and 1. I think that as you hear this revelation, um, I think that it's incredibly important that you lock in on this idea that obedience matters to God. There's so many people who, who miss this, who, who often try to live out of a relationship with God doing their own things. Like, you know, the Adams family, I'm just going to do it my own way. But I think that if we're going to live out uh, our relationship with God in a way that brings integrity to it and glory to his name, we have to focus in on obedience. Now, I think that when you think about obedience, it's often a term that some people struggle with. Like, it's like somebody forcing your hand or forcing your will to do something that you organically do not want to do. But I want to help you understand what obedience looks like. And I want to help you understand why it's necessary for you to obey God if you're going to tap into the blessings that God has for your life. Now, Jesus is our model. He did the will of his father. Jesus came to the earth and he was obedient. The Bible says in John 6, 38, for I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Mm. In John 8, 29, and he who sent me is with me and the father has not left me alone, but I always do the things that please him. Now, if Jesus himself could do the will of his father, 
Why is it so difficult for us to do the will of our Father? Is it because our wills are so strong? Is it because that there is a sense of our own personal autonomy we want to hold on to? What is it that causes us to resist obeying God? It's not that we don't have an awareness of what right and wrong is, but what is willful disobedience? Why do we struggle in this area? Like there's a desire, think about it, um, to work out. You get a trainer. The trainer gives you a plan, gives you a meal plan. And you're like, man, for real? <laughs> Why is it so hard? Right? Because it requires discipline. It means something in you has to die. It means you've got to be willing to let go of a part of you to submit to what God wants to do in your life. Mm -hmm. And has that been a struggle for you? Yes. 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 Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. What is it? Though? Is it the letting go of your own will? It's the sacrificial part. The sacrificial part. part. of yeah. letting go of the things that you feel like you need and you want. And, you know, like when you're growing and God, is, God has levels to it. Yeah. So the things that you, you could do at one yeah. point, you can't do yeah. at the next level. So I think just... Uh, you know, it really goes back to what I said in week one, just understanding that your life is not your own. If we keep that on the forefront, yeah. if we keep that on the forefront, I feel yeah. like it'll be easier life for us to understand not your own. and not live so zoomed in because it's a bigger picture. So don't live in a zoom in lens, but live in the bigger picture because yeah. in the bigger picture, it's like it all works together. We all yeah. work together. So mm. I think that's that's the hardest part of discipline is just shifting the mindset. I think if we can get our minds, like it's written, like you said, it's in our hearts, yeah. but it's just controlling the mind. Huh. Controlling yeah. the mind. I, I would add, just like you said, the fear of losing, right? Or losing mm -hmm. out of what you were comfortable huh. with. So mm -hmm. the idea of if I do take this walk, what would I be losing opposed to what I'd be gaining, mm -hmm. right? So like you get comfortable, well, I get comfortable with the things I have. So the idea of losing that for the unknown is fearful. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I would just add, I think it for me has revealed where I don't trust God. Mm -hmm. And then when you're interrogating that lack of trust, it's like it goes back to last week about, well, do I really know him? Like if all of this is about right. knowing him, <laughs> right, right, the more right. I get to know him, the more I trust him. So I don't yeah. need to know the outcome. I can just mm -hmm. move on being mm -hmm. obedient. Faith. That's so real. Faith. That's so real. I also to piggyback on what you're saying, I think guys trying to show us how much do we really want it. That's right. You know what I mean? Um, when, I, when I'm when i forced to be disciplined, I pray for some, and then I have to be disciplined about it. It's like, I, I want this, but how much do I really want it? I want a right. six pack. Right. How much do I really want <laughs> how it? How much do I really want it? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You how much, I mean? how much sacrifice? How yeah. much sacrifice am yeah. I willing to make to get that? And That's I so think real. that people want the end results, but don't want to go through the, the journey and the mm -hmm. process. Of wow, it's interesting you would say that because it leads me to this idea that, that, that although Jesus was a son of God, he learned obedience through suffering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Hebrews 5 and 8 says, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's through you know, the suffering we learn, like the real importance of obedience. Sometimes like a parent has let a child, you know, go through something that they don't want to see them go through mm -hmm. so they can learn. Okay, mm -hmm. I was trying to tell you, you keep on, I'm just gonna let you learn yourself. Mm -hmm. Like there's a moment when you say, that's hot, that's hot, mm -hmm. keep playing with it. Then at the moment you're like, okay, they gotta just experience that heat for a second. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, cause yeah. you never experienced it, they keep playing with it. Mm -hmm. So at some point, like at what point does God say, I'm just going to like stand back and let you experience what you experience and because there's something redemptive in the suffering that I allow in your life, right? And that's so important. And Jesus was obedient even to the point of death. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2 and 8 says, hey, he being found in the appearance of man, humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross, that his assignment was to down Calvary. And it's not that he did not contemplate getting out of it. Mm -hmm. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father, if it be possible, let this pass from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but I will be done. So it's not like there are moments in which you're like, Lord, is, if there's a way out of this, I'll take it. Yeah. You ever did that? Like, Lord, if there's any way, but then there's this moment where it's like, God, but not my will. Mm -hmm. To humble yourself and to submit your will to his will, I think is where obedience is. Even as you're watching me now, and I know you're strong will. I know I'm strong will. I know sometimes I have it all figured out. Sometimes it's not in alignment with what God desires in my life. 
that I've got to submit my will to God and say, not my will, but your will. And I think that's important, even as you're trying to negotiate with God. Like, well, Lord, can I get a little something I want? Right. You know? <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, he, his plans, right, are so much greater than what we could ever imagine over our own life. And so I think that's important, right? And I think that God is not looking for perfection in us, right? He's not looking for perfection. He's looking for us to just be on a path when we are intentional about obeying him and doing what he calls us to do. Because with that comes tremendous blessings. One of those blessings is the blessing of prosperity. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 3, and then verse 10, 11, and verse 18 and 24, it's worth me reading. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you the large and beautiful cities, which you did not build, houses full of all good things, which you did not fill, right? Hewed out wells, which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees, which you did not plant, when you have eaten and you are full. Then beware, lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Sounds like something Rob said in a previous episode here about the valley and the mountain. Lest you forget, the Lord brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, and you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you, and that you may go in, watch this, and possess the good land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. Right. It's something to be said about sustainable success. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The goal is not just getting there. Mm -hmm. right. It's how do you stay there? Mm -hmm. It's through obedience. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You see people get to the top, do things that they can't keep it mm -hmm. because they're disobedient. Get there and get reckless mm -hmm. because whatever whatever issues you have at one level of disobedience are only exacerbated when you get greater platforms. So you need to work this obedience thing out now so if God elevates you and gives you the opportunity, Lord, let me be more obedient because I don't want to get to this place and lose it all because I made poor choices, I made bad decisions and things of that nature. So I think that's important, right? Yeah, right. Definitely. It has me just thinking about like from a leadership perspective, and I'd be curious of your thoughts on this, like, building deep before you look to build up, like having that capacity yeah. to yeah. withstand, yeah. like yeah. much like, you know, a contractor builds a building, it's like they're blasting down first. They and are. then you see the skyscrapers downtown. I guess from a leadership perspective, Bishop, like what advice would you give to leaders in terms of really developing that capacity so that when you get to that next level, you can actually sustain it? Yeah, so I think, I think first of all, I think you have to have a spiritual perspective about it, right? You have to be mature enough to, to, to suffer through the perspective. And I mean that is we live in a world where we are judged by what people see. Mm -hmm. So when people don't see the building going up, they think you ain't doing nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, you pass by certain projects in Nashville, it's just a hole in the ground. Mm -hmm. And you just see, you know, something wrapped around a fence. And you're like, man, are they doing anything over there? But every day they're over there in the deep, mm -hmm. chiseling, mm -hmm. chiseling. It could be Eight months of just chiseling before I see one thing go up. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in your life, people waiting on you to like show up and floss and show them what you're doing. Yeah. But you got to spend that time really building your foundation first. Mm -hmm. Like not worrying about social media, but like I'm on my face. I'm praying. I'm obeying God. I'm building character. I'm developing what, what James Clear talks about in his book, Atomic Habits. I'm I'm really locked in on developing healthier habits in my life so that when I do build this business, when I do build this career, that no matter what storms or whatever comes in my life, this building will sustain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How amazing is that? Mm -hmm. And I think that perception piece is important. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's important um, <laughs> to build with the right stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to build with, the, to know what environment you're in. Mm -hmm. They build things differently here than they build them in California. Right. Mm. The codes are different yeah. because of what could potentially happen. Mm. Things are different here than they are in Miami. The right. codes are different. The weather phenomena, the earthquakes. So when you know the environment spiritually where you are, you know the different attacks that could come in your life. Mm. You're cognizant of the tools in which you build your life. 
build your business, build your family. Like we have to make certain because this is Tornado Alley. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Right. We don't build with sticks here, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. right? We build with steel. We build. You, you got to think about certain things, and so spiritually, I'm always cognizant of that because I believe that there are there are demons assigned to regions. Mm-hmm. I'll teach on that later, y'all. Stay tuned. <laughs> That's a whole other Bible study. We yeah, pass and pray on that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but when you're building your life and you're doing that, you know, you have to make certain that you're very intentional. So I, I to your point, I hope that answered it. But I really believe that's what that's what that's what it is, right? Yeah. I, um, when you when you say like when you talk about building up and sustainability, one thing that I learned is through the process of you building a foundation and building whatever it is, you stick in the, stick in the uh, process. After it's completed and done, that's when the real work starts again. It's like it starts all over. It's yeah. a never-ending cycle. I've seen, you know, you can you can work so hard for some. We've seen things come, they pop up like, oh, we're ready for it, and in three months, it's it's gone Man. because the stuff that got you there ain't gonna be the same stuff that Man. keep you there. It's all you know. So it's like you always have to keep learning. You always got to keep getting taking the signs that God give you. I, I say that God always sends the signs. Mm-hmm. So I say, we got to learn sign language. And when he sent us them signs, Man. you got to keep learning from them because if not, that 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 great thing that you worked for would, would, would vanish in three, five, six months. You know, I did a sermon series in uh, December. I uh, think many of you heard it on gifts. And uh, part one of that series, if God didn't send it, I don't want it. And I talked about, like, how do you know you know, if you're mature enough for God to give you something to the level of obedience. And I talked about like, you know, is being a good steward, mm. using the platform for good, mm. being mature enough to understand. I say it's easy when you get your, you know, you have a business, you do something and you get a check in the mail, seven dollars. You're like, okay, God, <laughs> you're working. I ain't gonna be ungrateful. It's easy to write that 70 cent tie check mm-hmm. on seven dollars. <laughs> but man, when you get that seven figure deal, <laughs> Your hand be shaking like, wait a minute. Whoa, God, wait, 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 wait. Right? right, right, yeah, right, right. What about that now? What about that now? Yeah, what about that now, right? Like, God bless you with a $700 million contract. What would you do? What would you do with that? Like, would you still be like, oh, well, God, you know, um, I'm going to throw you a bone. Right. Yeah, no, man. Like, it's the same principle of faithfulness yeah. and obedience. And that's it. You know, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, Everybody knows his story, right? Mm-hmm. And, and when jo- and Moses died and Joshua becomes their leader, the first thing God tells Joshua, and you got to hear this, it is so powerful. I've teach on it. I've written on it. The first thing he tells Joshua, and it's in Joshua chapter one, and I want y'all to hear this. It's going to bless you. He tells Joshua in verse eight, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Mm-hmm. In other words, what brought you here mm-hmm. has to sustain you. But you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe and do according to all that is written. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Whoa. Yeah. Stay with this word. Remain obedient. Then you will make your way prosperous. Imagine that. The way you go will be prosperous and you will have good success. Now, what's the difference between good success and success? Good success is significance. You'll be significant. Mm -hmm. See, we're called to be significant, Brittany, not just to be successful. Significance is generational. Significance is that people look back and know you made an impact in the kingdom, in the world. People look back and be like, generations that have been born yet to be like, I am because Adriana was. Mm-hmm. Right. I can. I got twelve restaurants because Black Rob did it. Right. Hey, like I can do this because I was inspired by Britain. I was sitting like, I, like that's significance. Mm-hmm. Dr. Charles Adams, you might have heard that name. I know. Mm-hmm. He was a pastor of the Hart Memorial Baptist Church in Detroit. I had never heard of him either. Mm-hmm. But when I graduated from Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It was, I graduated early. Mm-hmm. It was a December graduation. I want y'all to really capture what I'm going to say. And the, it was a preacher mm-hmm. doing my commencement address. They called him the Harvard Hooper. 
because he was a black preacher with a PhD from Harvard. Mm. And I was so mesmerized by that message that I was early in my call in ministry that when I heard him mesmerize me, I made up in my mind then that I was going to be a black preacher mm. with the earned doctorate from Ivy League school. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, I only applied to Princeton to my doctorate. Mm. Got in. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, he died in 2023. He died last year. Fast forward, December commencement, Southern University, 2023, fall. Mm -hmm. A preacher with an Ivy League degree mm -hmm. named Joseph Walker is doing com did commencement wow. at Southern wow. University. Full circle, Full circle moment. Circle. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. And some, some senior is going to be sitting out there listening to me. And say, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah. God will yeah. give you yeah. good <laughs> success. You see what I mean? Right. What's the point of doing it in your generation and you die and it, 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 nobody ever remember it? Right. Mm. Yeah. Right. Because success, that's through obedience. You stay obedient to God's word. God will, God will keep your legacy going, man. Mm. That's the whole point of this, man. Imagine that story, man. Right. That's how it works, man. Mm. God right. wants to give us good success, but it's all through obedience. It's all about saying, God, okay, I get it. And it's the moment when you recognize that it's bigger than you. Yeah. See, we think about letting go of our will, our desires, but when you realize it's bigger than you. See, the way a, the way a husband begins to love his wife, obeying the word of God, is when he realizes his decisions are bigger than him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's bars right there. <laughs> he will never, he will never love his wife. He will never love his wife. He will never love it, never be there for his children until he realizes. The reason why so many fathers you know, did not do right by their children, and children are suffering through it now because the fathers did not realize their decisions were bigger than them, and so the children are now dealing with the residue of absenteeism and the dysfunction because their decisions impacted their children. So I'm very cognizant that every day I wake up, my obedience to God is a stewardship. Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for more than myself. Mm -hmm. And man, there's times when I'm like, man, I just want just one turn up God, just one. And I realize, <laughs> I realize I'm Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III. She was going to say, I want a war rest right. day. I, 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 I want a war rest day. I'm, 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 I'm trying to keep it, I'm trying to keep it, I'm trying to keep it real. Just one turn up for the old time's sake. That's real. And I realize, man, like, all the people lives mm -hmm. yeah. that I'm responsible for. How many people could be hindered in their faith? Right. Yeah. Mm. If I'm out here on, you know, right. caught up on Snapchat with somebody <laughs> Snapchat, look at your pastor. Yeah. Right. Think about that. I think about the airport, the airport situation you was talking about. Yeah. Like, it was so yeah. Calm. Yeah. yeah. And, and could have could have went left. I could have yeah. like told that person off, right? So you when you begin to think about that, or when I think about the decisions I made. I think about my son, I'm driving him to school. I'm looking at my son, watch everything I do. Mm. I'm looking at him getting dressed when I get dressed and looking at come on where my Adidas, daddy got his Adidas on. Mm. And I'm thinking about that. And my daughter, how she like looks at me, I tell her I'm proud of her, and I'm telling her that she's a queen, I tell her, and, and I'm thinking about how she she will only understand men. Mm. Based on Perfect. the my, what? Wow. Right. Yeah. But so my obedience has collateral damage yeah. right. or collateral blessings. Yes, right. I was thinking about obedience. I was thinking about how <laughs> I sometimes think about obedience and attach it to tangible things. And then when you think about obedience and you think about things that's greater than yourself, yeah. it changes. It changes it for mm -hmm. me. It does. And what you said, I, I, what you said, I thought about how great would the world be if people applied that mentality that it's bigger than me. Mm. You know that who would have known that you got inspiration from a preacher that preached at your yeah um, commencement. commencement. Yeah. So it's like knowing that and applying that. He knowing it's bigger than him. Then you going back doing the same thing, knowing that it's bigger than you. Mm -hmm. Like if everybody applied that mentality, it would. Be, I think that the world would grow quicker, faster, mm -hmm. and because we have a mentality of scarcity. Yeah, I yeah. can't. <laughs> I don't want people to be in the image of me. Yeah, because if they're in the image of me, then. The, why do they need me for it? Yeah, yeah. But when you realize it's bigger than you and you're growing more people in the greater good of God, then I think that it'll be yeah. And I think the paradigm around that too is recognizing that like people 
aren't just seeing you, they're seeing the God in you and that's right. what they're connected man, with. So like, man. especially for women leaders, it's like, it's yeah. so important that you don't shrink. It's so important that you right. show up boldly. Show it's so up. important that you man. speak up. Like the all voice. of that is important yeah. because yeah. it's like, it's not about them honoring you, but it's like, they see the inspiration, they see the God in you. And then that's mm -hmm. how that legacy really gets cultivated. Somebody gets inspired by yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And you're that's producing good. the next yeah. Michelle Obama. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's real. You know, one of the things that I, I think uh, is important, I want you all to really write this down, is that our obedience must be complete, right? It can't just be partial obedience. It has to be complete obedience. Yes, we're thinking about all those decisions, all those things, but James 2 and 10 says, for whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point is guilty of all. Mm -hmm. You can't travago obedience. Mm -hmm. I'll take that, I'll take that, but I don't want that. Like you gotta, it's all or nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, God, God ain't just saying you just pick and choose what you want out of my word. Obedience is complete obedience, you know? And I think that when you strive for that, when you strive for Lord, I just wanna obey what you told me to do. Mm -hmm. I think, I think amazing things happens because when you seek to obey God in all things, amazing things begin to happen in your life. Psalm 119 and 2, blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek the Lord with his whole heart. The Bible speaks about this in Deuteronomy 5, 29. Oh, that they had such a heart in them that they would fear me and always keep my commandments, that it might be well with them and their children forever. Mm -hmm. Imagine that, that it be well with you and your children forever. Mm -hmm. that, that we have to often think, that obedience is not something that is difficult. Jesus said, now listen, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you. That's the controlling thing. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. We make obedience difficult. Mm -hmm. That's just too hard. Mm -hmm. And then once you do it, you realize, man, I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was working out with my trainer, man, I was like, you want me to do what? Pull up, pull up, what? Mm -hmm. I was like, that's too hard. Mm -hmm. And then after I did it a few times, I realized I could do this. Mm -hmm. I could do 100 crunches, or I could do 100 push-ups. When I started out, it looked so insurmountable. Mm -hmm. And then you realize that this formidable thing in front of you is a small thing yeah. because your will to do good it's greater than your will to do bad. So do you think obedience is like the same thing when it comes to your muscles? Your muscles are stretched. They continue to grow. At first, you like you can't do three pull-ups. Then you're doing seven pull-ups. Mm -hmm. Then you're doing 10. Yeah. And then it just grows like that. So is obedience the same walk where maybe, you know, I, I want to give up something. I may not want to yeah. no alcohol. I may exactly. go three months without it, then I realize I go three months, then you go six months, then you say, look, I can get rid of this. Yeah, it's just, it's, called, it's called spirit memory, like muscle memory. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You're training your spirit. Mm -hmm. You're training your spirit against it. Mm -hmm. So people might give up because they think it's an instant. Yeah, yeah it's not instant. It is not a spread. <laughs> it's a marathon, yeah. right? And when you understand that you, you're gonna, you may have a relapse, you may mess up, you may pick the phone up and call that person, or you may do something crazy, like, oh God, I just give up, I ain't gonna never be, a no, it's not like that. Let me tell you a story. I want you to never forget this, never forget this. So I want you to lock in, come here, let me tell you a story, all right? Mm -hmm. So, imagine going to the ice cream stand and you heard the preacher say, before you went on Sunday afternoon, you gotta give up. Chocolate. Chocolate is bad for you. Don't eat chocolate. God says don't eat chocolate ice cream. So you make up in your mind, all right, I give my life to Jesus and I'm done with chocolate. Now you go to the ice cream stand. This is an analogy. And you sit there and you say, I'd like to have vanilla. And... They give you a nice cone of vanilla, and you just walk away feeling so good. I got vanilla. I got vanilla, y'all. No more chocolate. Oh, boy. And then the next week, you go back, and you say, um, do you have swirl? Mm -hmm. Like, because you craving chocolate. Because mm -hmm. you've been eating chocolate <laughs> for 10 years. So you're like, it ain't a whole chocolate cone. Yeah, it's different. I just want a little chocolate in my vanilla. So you go through a swirl stage when you got a little yesterday in your tomorrow. But when you continue to grow up, in the things of God, you have less chocolate and less chocolate mm -hmm. in your vanilla. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. You're not going cold turkey straight to vanilla. Yeah. Yeah. You got to wean yourself off of it. Mm. And that's the grace of God who is long suffering that none of us should perish mm. because he knows that this is a process. And so I want you as you walk out your faith and obedience to know, don't beat yourself up if you made a mistake or if you're not all the way there. Just at least be on the path mm. of getting it right. Be on the path of saying, Lord, I made progress. I did a little bit more this time. And eventually you'll find out that obedience is so much better than sacrifice. Mm. Whoo, this has been great, y'all. So I'm good. so thankful for y'all. And y'all, man, y'all are amazing. Thank y'all so <laughs> much. Thank I thought we were going to inspire some people, right? Y'all, yeah. y'all, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that, that's what it's all about. Our decisions, man, have implications long before we even know it, they are impacting people. And I hope you've been impacted. And I want you to let us know you have. And if you need a relationship with Jesus Christ, you can't do this without him. The Bible says, now unto him who's able to keep me from falling. Man, you cannot walk this out without him. I want to encourage you to do that. Salvation, 78228. Text me right now. Text our ministry. Our team will follow up with you. If you want to recommit your life, you want to be a part of the Mount Zion Church, wherever you are around the world, connect with us now. We would love to have you connect. We thank you so much. It means a lot that you've connected with us, and we appreciate you. Look forward to all that God's going to do in and through your life. Thank you so much for being connected today. We love you, and we look forward to another part of this series. We're going to stay with it because we're going to grow up, y'all. So this is going to be a great 2024. Thank you for tuning in Deeper Dive. Thank y'all. Thank you. We out. Peace.